Okay, well, uh, welcome, and I uh, hope you're having a good day or evening, whatever time you happen it is that you uh, are watching this. I want to welcome you to the, the Grand Canyon, an absolutely amazing place. You can see uh, the the layer upon layer of rocks out here in the Grand Canyon, and that's what we're going to talk about, is we're going to leave living things behind for a little bit and talk about rocks so that we can uh, move from rocks to fossils, and then fossils to ancient life, and then ancient life to modern life so that's the pathway we're going to take and so I brought you here to the Grand Canyon so you can see these layers because I want to introduce the concept of a relative age relative age has to do with how old something is compared to something else so for example if we talk about a brother or a sister we could say that you're younger than the brother or you're older than the brother that's your relative age which is different than saying the absolute age which might be that you're 12 years old well, the same thing is true about these rocks. These rocks were laid down in layers, and all other things remaining unchanged. Uh, the oldest ones will be at the bottom, and the youngest ones will be up here at the top, and everything else uh, will be in age in between. So when we talk about older layers or younger layers without actually giving numbers, we're talking about relative age, and the Grand Canyon is a great place to um, see that. Uh, I've hiked to the bottom several different times, and if you've never been there and never hiked uh, all the way down to the bottom, um, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Beautiful place to go. Okay, as long as we're talking about uh, rocks, we should probably talk about the three basic kinds of rocks. Uh, this hopefully is a review from uh, past years, but you got igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Igneous rocks are rocks that start off molten and then cool to form solid rocks. And you can see one way that that happens in the images behind me. This is at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. You can see the magma coming to the surface, flowing on down, and this is going to cool and form uh, the new rocks in the area. This is how the Hawaiian Islands were formed. This is how uh, the, they expand in size and, and, and get new materials. So one way kind of rock is igne igneous rocks from molten uh, to cooling to solid. This is one way that it shows up. Here's another way that uh, igneous rocks show up. This is uh, Devil's Tower uh, up in uh, Wyoming. Another uh, beautiful place to go to. Uh, it's near Mount Rushmore, a few other uh, um, Wind Cave and Jewel Cave, lots of neat things to see up there. Uh, and this is an intrusion, they think, that actually came up within the Earth and didn't actually make it up to the surface. So this came up as a magma, magma intrusion within the sedimentary rock. This is all sedimentary rock around it. This intrusion comes up hot, it cools, and then it hasn't reached the surface and then all that the rock that has up above it erodes away erodes away this is a harder rock it doesn't erode as quickly and so it's left standing while the area around it continues to erode and so this again is another way that an igneous rock forms okay this is another kind of rock that you see behind me this is limestone uh, which is a type of sedimentary rock. So limestone is an example of a sedimentary rock. So we have igneous and we have sedimentary. Limestone is a kind of sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are formed when you got when you have sediment. You have eroded materials, plant material, rocks, sand that's going down the river, coming down the mountainside and gets deposited in these big inland seas or uh, lake beds. And then it's, it's compressed and gets cemented together. And so you get things like limestone. And as you can see in this example, these are the kinds of rocks that we're going to see fossils in. So sedimentary rocks are the result of sediment. That's the kind of rock that we're going to find fossils in. Fossils don't survive the magma all that well. A third kind of rock besides the igneous and the sedimentary is the metamorphic rock. And you can see an example of a metamorphic rock behind me. This is uh, marble. Uh, marble is compressed limestone that we saw as a sedimentary rock. So metamorphic rocks are rocks that are changed by heat and pressure. Uh, marble is an example of a metamorphic rock. This used to be the limestone, sedimentary rock. Now it's the marble. Metamorphic rock. 
Okay, well, I'm off to the side here. Uh, this is a picture from your book. You can find it there. This is an example of a rock cycle, or shows the rock cycle. You can put this on the back of your notes. Uh, the rock cycle shows that, that rocks don't stay the same, that they can, uh, they can change. For example, uh, we have over here, we can have our uh, igneous rock. You can see the magma coming up t uh, to the surface and then uh, cooling because it comes out of this volcano off the top of the screen then you get at wind and rain it's just going to erode that away and those particles are going to come down and they're going to deposit at the bottom of the sea or this lake bed and you're going to see here you can get the uh, uh, sedimentary rocks that are formed there that can get uh, pushed down underneath and then heat and pressure can change it into a metamorphic rock which can be uplifted you have top materials you wrote away this forms at the top and that can come back down to sedimentary rock again so the rock cycle what you really need to see out of this is that one rock can change um, into another type um, as it gets eroded away or as heat and pressure gets put onto it or as it uh, melts the material changes form and you get sedimentary rocks, igneous rocks, metamorphic rock. It's not a cycle in the sense that it's just around in, in, in one loop. You can go from igneous to metamorphic, back to igneous, back to, to metamorphic, um, but you get from one kind of rock to another and this is the rock cycle. Make sure you put that on the back of your notes. Okay, so as you saw in the last couple scenes, uh, sedimentary rocks uh, get formed as the s sediment, the, the eroded material, makes its way down rivers and streams to be deposited in lakes and oceans and inland seas. And they get deposited into layers. Now, the layers aren't always always flat. You think about walking into a lake that is, is, is not flat all the way across. You're going to have deep spots and shallow spots, but you're going to get these layers. And one layer is going to form, then the next layer is going to form on top of that, and the next layer is going to form on top of that. And that gives us this idea, this principle of superposition. Uh, you know, super means above, posi position where it is. So positioned above, you get the oldest rocks down here on the bottom, and then as you move farther and farther up, you get the youngest rocks up there at the top. So assuming that the layers haven't been uh, disturbed in any way, so you know, uplift can can change this. Uh, you get oldest rocks on the bottom, youngest rocks on the top, when you're looking at, and this is the principle of superposition. Okay, well, we said that the law of superposition works when things remain unchanged. Well, we know that things rarely remain unchanged. So this diagram that I found gives you an example of some of the kinds of changes that you can have. And the one that I want you to note is D here. Uh, D is uh, this igneous, so this molten rock that's been shoved into these layers of sedimentary rocks. So we got A is the youngest, B is the middle age, and down here at the bottom is uh, C, that light blue that you can see started. That's the oldest those formed in order and then you get this magma that's pushed up within it as D comes on through and that's this igneous intrusion. Well when we s sort this out if in order for that igneous intrusion to go through that those rocks had to been there in the first place so we know that that light blue at C is the oldest B is medium age, A is younger and D is younger than all of that because it got shoved in after those layers were formed. Uh, otherwise, it couldn't have been shoved through like that. Um, and then they show ease is is you get this this faulting action, which then offsets everything. And then you can imagine river cutting through that, and then it can start looking really confusing. But don't worry so much about that. I want you to see this igneous intrusion. It gets shoved through. It has to. Be, it's younger than all of those layers, and that has to be true because. Um, those layers had to have been there uh, first. And then all the way at the top you can see a uh, material forming as, as there's more sedimentation going on and that could be after the intrusion but um, just looking at A, B, and C, C is the oldest, B is next oldest, A is younger than that, and then D is the youngest at all of all. That igneous intrusion came through later.
Okay. Well, one thing that helps uh, scientists sort all of this out um, from one place to the other is something called index fossils, because as you have these layers that um, are, are form these sedimentary layers, they can have fossils in there. And I'm going to move all the way off to the side here, <laughs> see if I can get all the way completely. So you can have um, fossils uh, form within those, and as the fossils form, if the fossil is in a layer that we can age, and if it's common fossil in terms of found in lots of different places, but narrow in age, only found within a few, um, um, within a specific time frame, we can call them uh, index fossils. They, we know that whenever we find that fossil, that rock is of a certain age because that fossil was only found within a certain time span of life. So it's got to be common enough for us to find it in more than one place, otherwise it's not very helpful. And it has to li have lived within a short time span, so it's not through all the, the, the rock layers. And that can tell us about, help, help us to compare ages from one place to another. And so we can see, like in this particular band, you can see uh, in band six, a particular fossil on the left, and then miles away, you find that same fossil in maybe a different kind of sedimentary rock, but we can see it's the same age because that rock, that particular fossil, let's say, is only found 300 million years ago. So in, in six on the left, it was 300 million years old. We know that in six on the right, it's 300 million years old because that fossil was only found within a specific age. So index fossils help us to determine the age of rocks. If we can find the age of that of the rocks that the index fossil is in, we know that when we find that fossil somewhere else, that rock is of the same age because it only lived within a, a specific time frame. Okay, so here we are back at the Grand Canyon again, and uh, just to uh, review, remember that we talked about relative age, which is an age compared, uh, comparing one thing to another. We talked about three different kinds of rock, igneous rocks, which is uh, molten and then cools, uh, sedimentary rocks, which is sediment uh, materials, loose bits, pieces that gets pulled down, deposited in the bottom of, of uh, uh, lake beds or ancient or inland seas. Uh, and then compressed and hardened, and we get metamorphic rock, which is when heat and pressure changes uh, other rocks into a different form. We looked at the rock cycle, where we saw that one kind of rock can be, that material can be changed into a different kind of rock. We looked at the uh, uh, principle of superposition, where we talked about the, it shows that the, the lowest layers are the oldest, the next layers are middle age, and the top layers are the youngest, assuming nothing's been disturbed. We looked at if an um, igneous intrusion goes through that, that it's younger than all of them because they had to have been there first. And we talked about index fossils, fossils that are uh, found in a lot of different places, but through time were found in a short amount of time so that we can use that to, uh, once we find out it's age in one place, we can use that to age the rocks uh, in other places. Okay. Uh, in your notes, uh, look at, take a look at the question. What, are, what I would like for you to do is make a flow map, a sequence map that shows an order of things to show material going from being igneous to sedimentary to metamorphic to back to uh, sedimentary again. So set up a little sequence map that shows that in order. Show me that you understand the, the rock cycle and the different kinds of rocks. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the trip and saw some, uh, some neat sites, learned a, a few new concepts. And um, we'll take those and start applying it to the concept of uh, ancient time and then fossils next.